And then so we went and we they want us to check it. We said the diagnostic bay and the pizza bay out. And then Stand there on the promises of God. We don't have our pianist, but we have our trumpeter. We have a trumpeter here. How many? How many? Red man is bad. Orange man. How many verses? You're going to get more red. Cut his head. Catch that. How many verses? Three. Did you know that? Did yes, you know anybody, did. Did you know anybody cut his chair? And he was cheap. He didn't tip her well. No, I'm right. He was cheap. That's how he got to be a billionaire. Whatever he listen, that, that's gonna come fast. Mm -hmm. 
how we get through it today? It's like this, toy claws. I don't know. Uh, let's go four eighty nine, forty seven, four eighty seven, like that. Now I brought the cheese. Does it feel, buddy, feel warm or cold here? We okay? We're good. Sixty seven feels warm. Warm up. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, now I belong to Jesus. Do you belong to Jesus? Yes, yes. I'm going to give you the message tonight. And God put on my heart because so I was going to teach something else. And uh, I think it would be very appropriate. So pay attention. All right. Now I belong to Jesus. Three verses. We'll sing that. We'll pray. And we'll sit down. What are you showing? Whatever you're ready. At least this one's a good one. I can sing this one. Good. I know it's good. Yeah, like, that was your excuse last time. Any other promises? Good. Okay. <laughs> I know all the songs, actually. You ready? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> don't, don't sing them all that well, but I know them all. All right. How many verses? Three. 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 Surgery, so we're yeah, thankful for that. And also, yeah. now Josephine, you, you said you knew that people knew that. I put it on the Josephine, woman's test. Josephine's son's wife, son is test. It was uh, a couple days ago, yesterday. No, yesterday. yesterday. Yeah. We met her, Sarah. Met her at when Josephine got baptized at Ray's pool. I don't know a lot of circumstances, but we'll talk to Josephine and. So his name is Sammy. That was the wife Sarah. He had four children. Four children. Four children. So pray twelve, for fourteen. Pray, yeah. So twins. Pray for that family. Uh, she said, "Please pray." Sammy, his name is. And, uh, it was sudden. He's the oldest son. Yeah, son, forty-three, forty-four, forty-three. Just like in a day. Uh, you don't like to hear that, but sometimes it's a reminder to us that we don't know what the day will bring forth. 
The right. Bible says that. Yep. Go spot thyself tomorrow. I know it's not what David been forth. Get things right with God when you have the opportunity. Amen. Don't wait till it's too late. Amen. And then, you know, something happens like that. So that that's a sad story. But we'll pray for Josephine and for the family that God will give them grace. And through that, that maybe their eyes might be open to some spiritual truths. As terrible as that tragedy is, hopefully something good will come out of it. So I pray for her, pray for Marianne, and pray for Rose, also Rose Kennedy. Queen. Got report there was no cancer. Amen? Amen. So that was uh, concern. Rose was thinking the worst. That that was it for her, but thank God she's okay. Rose is an old war horse. She's not going anywhere. <laughs> she's tough, that Rosie. So praise the Lord. All right, open your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I'm, not, I'm gonna put that up short, put it up to 68. Okay. I, I do go to each other. 68. What I mean. Second Corinthians chapter five. What the fan on? No, no, just put this in place here. Yeah. It's up. Good. That's good. No. First Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter oh, second. five. I, I didn't put my board. I do that for Sunday, but it's called being an ambassador. That's what the message is tonight. And I'll give you a little. Read a little definition of an ambassador, read a little bit about it. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Let's read 17 to 20. We'll pray, and then we'll make some comments and give you my few points here tonight. All right. Second Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a, if I say it, no creature. new creature. Can yeah. I say that? Yeah. Second Corinthians yeah. 5, If any man, therefore, if, if, Biggest word in the English language. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away, behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespass unto them, and hath committed uh, unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. I'll explain that a little bit more, but that's what we'll read there and uh, ask God to help us. Brother Sean, lead us in the word of prayer, please. Thank you, Lord God, for this night. Thank you for this place. Give us to meet, Lord God. We pray for all those people that have been mentioned, Lord yes. God. Lift them up, Lord, uh, please. Help them, Lord God. Give them the grace they need. Heal them if you can. Yeah, we just God. pray for the service tonight, Lord God. We pray that you meet with us, speak with us. Give Pastor uh, just the words, Lord God, you have to say. And just, Lord, help us to get a hold and understand this. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 I'm glad Jillian's feeling better. Amen. 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 Timmy, feel better? Yeah. Better. Yeah. Do you go to school? Yeah, he's feeling a little better. Oh, good. Praise God. All right, so being an ambassador, an ambassador is a representative of a foreign, of a sovereign nation in a foreign land. Representative of a sovereign nation in a foreign land. That's what an ambassador is. So if you're an ambassador to another country, you are you are representing your country. Now you're not that country. You're representing that country. And if you're placed in pick a country, it doesn't matter. And you are there for America as an ambassador, you would be to them. What America is. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if they don't know America, they say, well, he's our ambassador. Let's find out from him or her what's about what's what's up in America. Because they're the ambassador from America to Belgium, let's say. But you're an ambassador. You're an ambassador for Christ. Amen. So what's the foreign land that you represent? Hmm. Heaven. Heaven. Yeah. yeah, New Jerusalem. And we are here on earth representing a foreign land in, in in our present state for us it's America. And we're here representing a foreign power, God, mm -hmm. and the foreign land. So that's our that's what we are we are all called to be ambassadors. All right? If you're in Christ. Now watch. So let's go back and look at this a little more deeply. So in verse verse 17, my first point is this. It's a powerful verse. And I think a lot of us here know that verse. 
If you don't know that, it's, that might be new to you. It's a powerful verse. Amen. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Again, the big word there, if. It's not anti-disestablishmentarianism. As I say, one of the biggest words in this language. It's if. Because if is conditional. But it could go any way you want it. But if any man be in Christ, that's up to you. He's a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Listen, it's 2020 to New Year. Amen. Yes. And I'll make some application as to what things might change for you. But as far as the verse is concerned, it's talking about in God's eyes. When you got saved, you're, if you're in Christ, if you're in Christ, say amen. 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 If you're in Christ, then God sees you as part of the Christ's body. He sees you as Christ, perfect and whole. Mm. Perfect. Now, that's, thank God he looks at me through the lens of Christianity, through Christ. Amen. And if he looks at you through the lens of Christ, you're okay. That's right. If he chooses to look at you outside of that lens, we're not okay. That's right. Amen. Because then he's looking at you. Mm -hmm. And the idea is we, watch, don't look at ourselves through the lens of Christ oftentimes. Mm -hmm. We look at ourselves through our own faults and our own skewed vision because that's our perspective Amen. and that's okay to understand that you know your faults you know what your sins are you know your foibles come on amen, amen. but that's okay because that's for you to work on i mean in terms of being with god if you're in christ again all your sins are forgotten mm -hmm. that's powerful yeah. but it means christ is a new creature listen i got saved 34 years ago I'm essentially the same height and weight. I gained a few pounds. I mean, I was probably 170 when I graduated high school. I'm probably 185 now. All right, so I gained a few weight. But I mean, you're talking to me, that's about it. You know, it's not that bad. I mean, that's my, a lot of things didn't change. I got gray hair. <laughs> not as fast as I used to be. All right. I mean, all those things are still true. But that's not what he's talking about. He's saying, in Christ, you're a new creature. I became a new creature the moment I got saved. The moment we got saved. We be you became a new creature in God's eyes. God sees you as complete and perfect and whole. Yeah. New creature. Yeah. Not the old guy that you deal with. Mm -hmm. We all got to deal with it. See, God chooses, plays a trick on us. He gives you this blessing, but he leaves you in that old body. Yeah. Like the cocoon we're talking about. He leaves you in there. He doesn't. He gives you a glimpse, a foretaste of the glory divine, but he, do he, he lets you deal with yourself mm -hmm. to, to help you see that when in Christ you're a new creature in God's eyes, you should be a new creature in your eyes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, sometimes you got to say this, okay, God, I know I'm, I'm new in your eyes. Th I'm thankful for that. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I know there's still some of me that's messed up. And I need help. And that's what Christianity is. And recognizing your areas of weakness, recognizing those parts where you struggle, and say, Lord, help me in this area. That's good. Be honest with God. Mm -hmm. God, listen. Nothing you do will catch God by surprise. Yeah. Nothing that you, nothing you thought, nothing you've done. It's not like God said, wow, I didn't see that coming. I mean, he knows it all. Yeah. It's the idea, the revelation is for you to get saying, you know, the fact, fact is we don't often know what's in our heart. Mm -hmm. We don't often know the things we're capable of. We say, oh, I would never do that. <laughs> Be careful. So you, you know what you best to say? By, by God's grace, I'll never do that. Mm -hmm. Come on. Amen. You with me? Mm -hmm. yep. Peter's. Peter was an apostle. Peter walked on water. Peter saw the Lord three and a half years. And you know what Peter said? You, everybody else could deny him. I'll never deny him. I'll never deny him, Lord. I'll die for you. Peter, listen to me. Tonight, three times you'll deny me for the rooster cross twice. Peter said, no way. Arguing with the Lord. Our Lord didn't say anything. As time passed on, and the rooster crowed twice. He denied it three times. You know, Peter would think he wept bitterly. Right. He cried. He said, yeah, 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 that's an idiot. I can't believe I, I, I'm such an idiot. That's what he did. And he got right. That's us. Amen. Thinking we'll never do something that you do. He said, I'm such an idiot. I can't believe I did that. He really said that. What's the matter with me? Mm -hmm. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I said, I, I, I talked to myself. I went in the store today to get something. Went to the bank and I was supposed to get a check register and I you know do what I do. I leave and I'm gone. And I'm I'm the ten minutes away I go, I'm oh, such an idiot. Well I wrote to myself, get new track check registers, you know. And I looked at it, okay. Then I started talking to the girl and I do what I do and I went left. And I go, I, 
I think the checker is there. Like, what's, the matter with, like, what's the matter with me? I go, a lot. <laughs> you know what? We got problems. God knows that. But I'm in Christ, I'm a new creature. Mm -hmm. Amen. But you know, the good thing about being a new creature, that's from God's perspective. Again, from my perspective is, I know I've changed over the last 34 years, and hopefully you know you've changed throughout your Christian walk. But there's still some more changes to be done. 2020 is a good year to make some changes, amen? amen? Get that proper vision. And you know what you say to yourself is ask yourself, here's the question you say, what has to change in myself? Have old things really passed away like the verse says? I mean, old things have passed away in God's sight. I understand that. Spiritually speaking, you're fine. Mm -hmm. But practically speaking, old things haven't always passed away, have they? Sometimes those old things hang on to you, and they, they, they clamor for your attention, and they pull you back to what you once left, trying to drag you back with them. And there's a fight to, to, to say, no, I'm not going down that road, and you need to, like I said Sunday, look up, look to Jesus. At that moment, we say, Lord, help me, give me strength to go on. Let me not fail that grace that you've given me. To fight the good fight of faith. Amen? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, that's a battle that we're all in. But you're a new creature of God's sight, and that's a beautiful thing. But here's one of the things we have to get. Our sanctification is a daily work. The moment you were saved, you were set apart, sanctified, made holy and pure. In God's sight, that, that's true. Everybody that's saved. But your daily sanctification is a battle. Paul told Titus to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Soberly, righteously, godly in this present world. That, that's a good three-point illustration, amen? Mm -hmm. That's what we, that's how we are, we say, well, I'm already that way in God's sight. Yeah, that's spiritually speaking. But down here, you've got some kinks to work out. Mm -hmm. And that's part of why God reminds us, I believe Paul's reminding us of the promise that you're a new creature in Christ to give you encouragement. To say, if God sees me that way, I should see myself that way. And let me start walking that way. Amen? Remember Gideon was hiding from the Midianites? Amen. Gideon, right. And he's hiding. He's, I mean, I don't blame him. They're gonna, the Midianites are outnumbering them, you know, 135 to whatever, one, and he's hiding, threshing wheat. Doesn't want to be caught for fear of being killed. And, you know, God called him. <laughs> hey, Gideon, that mighty man of valor. Wow. I mean, you know, can you think, he, he knows he's hiding. He doesn't want to get caught. He's calling a mighty man of valor. Not because he was fresh and wheat and hiding, just because what he was what? Going to do. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? What he was going to do. Yeah, 300 against 185,000, 135,000. It was, yeah, 300 against 135,000. Many nights. 450 to 1, the odds are. 450 to 1. And he didn't have any weapons except the trumpet. And he didn't even play as well as Sean. <laughs> he had a trumpet, he had a pitcher, and a lamp. That's all they had. And those guys defeated 135,000 Midianites. Uh -huh. That's why he called the mighty man of valor. Amen? Amen. Yeah, amen. It's what he was going to do with him. Uh -huh. God sees you're already sanctified and holy in his sight. Yeah, right? Yes. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Live it. Mm -hmm. Be Christ. So try to live it. Yep. If you're in Christ, you're holy and righteous. So what does that mean? That means that, okay, I got I, I already won the race. I got the gold medal. Mm -hmm. So now what do I have? I have the race to run. But I, I already won it. Okay, so run it. And try to run it righteously, soberly, and godly in this present world. Because this present world isn't righteous, sober, or godly. I don't it. It'll undo every aspect of Christianity in you if you let it. Amen? Amen. 2020 is new year. Make a make a note to yourself and say, Lord God, give me grace mm -hmm. to get some victories. You know, you you know, here I've always suggested this is that work on that which is most pressing in your life. There's always gonna be, you know, lots of things to deal with. Work on that issue you have that you know bugs you. Is that fair? Lots of fun. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, sir. The work on the one that's the, the, the most glaring. After you, after you work on that, and by God's grace, get some victory in that, then you might look at some other 
maybe less obvious sins. But start somewhere, because certainly we all could start looking in, introspectively and say, I need to clean this up in my life. Yeah, amen. And once you do that, God gives you grace to try something else. Listen, when Bernard and I got saved, he was going, we, you know, we didn't, we weren't this. No. But we, we attacked one, one thing at a time, kept going to church and hearing and preaching and listening and reading and praying. And yeah, it, it takes time. But little by little, we, we, you know, we you get down the road, you look back, you're wow. We, we didn't bail out. We didn't quit. We, by God's grace, we stayed the race. Amen. And we're, we, we've changed. Does that mean that we've arrived? No. Does that mean that we have all the answers? No. But certainly a lot better off than we were years ago. Amen. Now, we were just as saved 34 years ago as I, as I am now. Nothing changed. If I were to die then, I'm, it's the same thing as dying now. I'd still go to heaven. The difference being, in the time he's allowed me to live, he taught me, learned a lot of God's word, helped others. And also get some victories to enjoy that and live a good life down here. Amen? Amen. All right, so number one, it's a, you're a new creature in Christ. And again, if any man be in Christ, if, you're, if you have to know you're in Christ, you have to know that. Mm -hmm. If you're not in Christ, you need to get in Christ by asking Christ to save you. Amen. Now, verse 18 is a new commission. Watch this. All things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. I love the wording there. Reconciled us to himself, because God and Christ are one, by Christ, Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Read that to yourself again. Hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. So what does it mean to reconcile something? If you reconcile an agreement or an argument, you are settling two opposing factions. Mm -hmm. If you reconcile a bank statement, you're reconciling what the bank says you have and what you say you have. Mm -hmm. And the bank's always right. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. Uh, and you're reconciling, you, we are, and, and wow, well, here's the commission. You're to reconcile people to God. Mm -hmm. By Jesus, that's what it says. You're given a ministry of reconciliation. What's the reconciliation? Perhaps I don't get it. Lost world, lost man, person who's not saved, person who's not in Christ. They're not reconciled to God. They might think they're okay, but they have to, you, your job, the commission, here's the, look, first one is, is, is your new creature. Second one, you have a new commission. When I say commission, I'm not talking about receiving commission on it. On a stock trade. <laughs> I'm talking about commission is a charge. When you get a commission, a commissioned officer, you're getting, you're getting a charge to do something, a specific ordinance. That's a, that's commission. I'm commissioned to teach and preach the word of God. You're commissioned, we're all commissioned, the same thing, to help reconcile lost world to Christ. Right. Got that? Yeah. How do we do that? Tell them the plan of salvation. It's simple. I mean, that's our ministry of reconciliation. I mean, you could be involved. You, you could be a minister of home, not a pastor. Yes. Mm -hmm. You can all be ministers in the, in the sense that you have access to the one thing the world doesn't know. Well, I mean, so many people, a lot of people don't know it. Not, not the world in general. The world system isn't going to tell you this. Christians will. And we have access to the greatest truths hidden to lost man is that you could be reconciled to God. So reconciliation brings two opposing parties into agreement, okay? Mm -hmm. Lost person, lost man is not reconciled to God until he comes through Jesus Christ. Then he gets reconciled. And it's 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 an agreement. It's compatible. You're now on even playing field. When God reconciled you, it's because you trusted Christ. So the moment you trusted Jesus Christ to save you, said that sinner's prayer, and you meant it, you became reconciled with God. You were one with God. There was no more difference between you and God in the sense of you understanding what he wanted you to do. You've been reconciled. It doesn't mean you're perfect. It means you're reconciled. It means you're forgiven. Did you ever see the bumper sticker? Christians are forgiven. They're not perfect. Hmm. Aren't perfect. They're just forgiven. Right. right. Well, that's what reconciliation is. You've been reconciled. So you've been made right with God. Now, okay, that's that's because of Jesus Christ. It's not because of your efforts. All you did was trust him by faith. He did the reconciliation. Yes. 
we have the ministry of reconciliation. In other words, he's giving us a commission, a charge, a job to do to help reconcile lost man to God. That's one of the jobs that the church is in commission to do. It's one of the jobs we're all commissioned as Christians to do. It's not the only thing you're supposed to do. I mean, it's not, you know, people could, even Christians could make hobby horses of, of great Bible doctrines and create something that's not biblical. I, I mean, soul winning is important, leading people. What's more important is walking with Christ. Amen. If you do that, <clears throat> part of that aspect is going to be your concern for others to hear truth. Amen. Mm -hmm. You're concerned. You invited the church. You tell them. You try to talk. No, but you can't twist somebody's arm, beat them over the head, and make them believe. They have to. It has to come from their heart. Mm -hmm. So, what's our ministry? Just tell them. Tell them about. It. They can be. They can be reconciled to God. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful thought. Yeah. To be reconciled with God. You know that your your accounts and reconciliation is even. You know that you're reconciled to God. That all. It's all forgiven. That's good. That's a good feeling. That takes a big weight off your shoulders. Yeah. You know, a lot of the lost world doesn't know that. They don't know that. They'll, they'll do whatever the world tells them to do to drown out the pain of this life. Yeah. Because ultimately, you know what they're looking for? They're looking for peace. Right. If they can't find peace, if, they, if they're not going to find it through Christ, they're going to get a facsimile thereof. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if it's drugs, drinks, sex, any. It's going to give you a temporary high a euphoric feeling, and you'll feel okay, but it's going to leave you bereft of God. It doesn't right. give you what Christ wants to give you. That's right. Yeah, because it's spiritual. You need we need a spiritual help. Everything else is karma, right. and it does. There's a there's pleasure in sin for a what season. season. There's going to be pleasure in things. Otherwise, if there was no pleasure in doing sin, nobody would sin. Right. But there's a, there's a there's a there's a derivative. There's a pay a, pay, a pleasure. So I like this. It's, it's, it's when it becomes, the light becomes an addiction and then you can't stop it. That's when you got a problem. But the devil doesn't tell you that. So, and again, uh, what, what we need, Christian man, is spiritual food, the Word of God, Amen. spiritual health, mm -hmm. sanity, peace of mind, heart, love, joy, peace, mm -hmm. long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. That's what we need. You can't get that at the store. No, sir. Can't get that. Even through Amazon, <laughs> you, can't you can't. You know, you can't even tell Alexa, "I need a little joy piece." Well, how do I get it? So here's the thing: you need you need to get that through Christ. He, the fruit of the Spirit, Christ will give you that. And once you get in Christ, God avails you to those things. If you just say, "Okay, Lord, help me," mm -hmm. and that's a great weight, knowing that you have that. You know, um, I, I could reference years ago when my mom passed away, because it was very dear and close to me, and who was a good Christian. She loved the Lord, my mom, read her Bible. I led her to the Lord, and it was a blessing for me. She was a better person than me, no <laughs> doubt, but I was able to lead her to the Lord, so that was a real double blessing. But the thing was, at, at her funeral, my brother spoke, and uh, his wife and Bernard, and I preached. And when my brother, you know, he's an eloquent speaker, he's, he's been in business for many years, in Wall Street and everything, but John, as he was talking, he was saying that he's not saved. He's not saved. He goes, I he didn't know. know. I don't know what mom is. Didn't know. He didn't know, and he was he was hurt. I felt bad. I don't know what mom. Don't know he was at a loss. Yeah, so he, he was like, well, too happy. To let you, you. This is your bailiwick, you know. And I said, John, I'm sorry, but I do know what she is. Amen. And I explained it, you know, biblically. And, but the thing was, that's a picture of lost man, and he's mm -hmm. a, a nicer guy you'll ever meet, my brother. Yeah. But without Christ. He's going to stand in his own righteousness. It's not going to fare. He's not going to fare well when he stands up against Christ. No. The illustration I always give is like not this, he's not reconciled. Picture the scales of Libra, and you got your sins here, you and in Christ here, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, Christ is perfect and pure. How are you going to stand up to that? You're not. The tail scales are going to go. Mm -hmm. You're going to be way down. But once you receive Christ. Scales are balanced because you know you know you've been reconciled. Be it my brother or anybody else that doesn't know Christ, you're on your own. Mm -hmm. You need to stand before God to realize that, and that's between it's you and you and God. There's no listen. Nobody stands. At the end of the day, when you when you go and meet the Lord, it's you, it's you and God. And you have to know in your own soul. 
mm -hmm. uh, where what's going to happen. And where you're gonna, there's a sting of death. We talked about that last night. But at least the Christian knows where he or she's going. I mean, look at Grandma Kitty. Right, for all these past months and many was some nights we thought she was going oh to expire. I mean, she was really going through some rough times this year. <clears throat> had a rough year. Mm. And then she would say to us, to me, she would cry out and say, Jesus, take me. She was screaming, you Jesus, take me. Take me. <laughs> I want to go. And then she just, and then, then she didn't go. She goes, well, I guess she doesn't want me right now. <laughs> I said, well, Mommy, it's not your time yet. But I mean, I understand you're, you're crying out. You were in pain. You want to just be delivered and go. Um, and she even called, to, to Bernadette called Tommy and says, pray, tell, tell Jesus to take me, John. Tommy said, I'm not going to pray that. <laughs> you <know? laughs> I'm not going to, I'm sorry. Usually you pray that. But in her own heart, she's like, I know where I'm going to go. So at that moment, you know, she's did suffering. When you suffer like that, you want to just be out of suffering and say, just take me home. And uh, God gave her, rejuvenated her. I mean, she's not in great health right now. She's got some medical issues, no doubt, respiratory problems. But she didn't pass back then, so God's given her more time. More what, to do. Whatever it is, whatever your time is up, you, you know, God knows it. Amen. But the thing is, when that day comes, and you know, hopefully we all live healthy, long lives, and, or the Lord blows the trumpet, we all get out of here. But at that, in, in any event, when you go out to meet him, it's you and, it's you and God. Yeah, that's right. It's you and God alone. So nobody else there for you, you know. And that's important to know that because we've been given a new commission, mm -hmm. along with you being a new creature. And that commission is that we have a ministry of reconciliation. That's a ministry. Mm -hmm. Ministry is something you do for God. And we all have that capability. Mm -hmm. Let's look at something else. Let's go back there. Second Corinthians 5, 17, new creature, 18, new commission, 19, I'll read 19 and 20 is the last one, that's new conversation. So 19 says, to wit, to wit means to know, that's uh, Elizabethan English, to know, to wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Right, when he says not imputing the trespasses, their trespasses unto them, when God imputes something to you, he's charging it to you. So he's not imputing your trespasses to you the moment you're reconciled with God. If he imputes to you his righteousness, he imputes to God your sinfulness. Yeah. He imputes that to Christ, actually. God imputes you watch. God takes, imputes, in other words, a charge. He takes all your sins, he imputes or charges them to Christ. Okay? He takes all of Christ's righteousness. He was perfect, pure. Listen, he lived 33 years sinless. Amen? Amen. Willingly died at Calvary. He takes that righteousness and imputes that to you. Whew, that's a good deal. That's a good deal. What does that, how, what does that cost? Free. It's an exchange, right? it's an exchange. You, all you do is accept it by faith. Yeah, yeah. He takes all your sins, your everything you've ever done, everything you will do, and he imputes it to Christ. And then he takes Christ's perfect righteousness, the robe, the picture is in Zechariah 3, showing when he yeah. puts that robe of righteousness on, 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 Joshua. On, on Joshua, and he says, your, your trespass is gone, and wow. your, fil your filthy transgressions, iniquity, now you've got a robe of righteousness. Mm -hmm. That's what the picture is. And you've been clothed in Christ's righteousness. He imputes to us his righteousness, yeah. imputes to Christ our sinfulness. Right? Yeah. That's what he's talking about. Now look at verse 20. Mm -hmm. That's called the doctrine of imputation. Mm -hmm. Alright, verse 20. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. Remember we're the ambassador? We're the representative of a foreign nation. For us, it's in America. Mm -hmm. To be anywhere else, though. We are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be you reconciled to God. Wow, what's that mean? He's just saying, here's your new conversation. This is what you're going to say. Be, here everybody, be you reconciled to God. That's our commission. That's the true conversation. You're going to, he's going to bid us to do, beseech us we pray you in Christ's stead. What does that mean? In place of Christ? We're Christians. Good evening. Mm -hmm. We're Christians. Yes. Mm -hmm. Are you a Christian? Yes. Amen. You're in Christ's stead, in Christ's place. Mm -hmm. If you're in Christ's place, okay, 
Christ was in the world reconciling the world to God by himself, right? Yeah. Now he's given us that ministry. So what do you say? You're doing it. You're doing it for him. For, as, as, as Christ. Yeah, in form. You, you are in his stead, in his place. Right. He's going to heaven. That's good. The Lord, listen, I, I, listen, I think about these things. Christ is in heaven 2,000 years ago. Yes. Right. He's so concerned about the world, fix it. And that's not being, I'm a preacher, I'm not being disrespectful or irreverent. I mean, fix it. Mm -hmm. Well, he's going to fix it one day, right? That's right. In the meantime, you know what he did? He said, no, I'm going to leave it up to you. <laughs> hey, you guys, go do it. Now, we make a mess of it. Maybe do some things right and, and gain a little bit throughout, throughout our journey and Help some souls find right. peace. That, that, that's, that, that gives me a lot of comfort and solace. But I mean, ultimately, when the Lord comes back, he's going to straighten the whole thing out. Amen. But in the meantime, he's back in glory. Yeah. He did his part of Calvary. He said, okay, I'm entrusting you with the commission to try to reconcile the world to me. Mm -hmm. And that's our conversation. Is very simple. Ready? Be reconciled to Christ. That's, I mean, this, you know, this is what somebody say, be reconciled to Christ. But that's also what you're saying. You want, how do you want them to be reconciled? You want them to be saved. Yes. Amen. You want them to be in Christ. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, mm -hmm. he's a new creature. Yeah. Question is, are you in Christ or not? That's all it comes down to. And if you are in Christ, then you're saved. Amen. Amen. And then salvation is a prayer. It doesn't use these. I'm a sinner, Christ the Savior, Lord save me. It's simple. Yeah. There's no pressure. That's between you and God. And you mean that. That's all it takes. Mm -hmm. And you say, is it, is it that simple? Yes. Yep. And the only difference, the only thing that will deny you that simplicity is a dishonest heart. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you could pray a prayer, you could say words, mm -hmm. that won't save you mm -hmm. unless you really mean it. Mm -hmm. right. I had a Jewish girl that worked with me years ago in the city. She was a bookkeeper for me in my office. And I was the boss, so I used to preach to everybody, talk to them. I had the privilege I was the partner, but you know, I was, I was used wisdom, but she would always talk to me, Margaret, and I would talk to her, and she, she'd like listening to me. She went along and prayed that I wouldn't be right. And I, I don't know why. Her sister used to listen, too. She, years later, when she quit, she tells me, no, I did. I prayed the, pray, the Russian girl. I prayed the prayer because you're my boss and I like you, but I didn't really believe that. What's the matter, Margaret? I'm sorry, but that's not going to help you. Then. You didn't get a raise because of that. I mean, if you did, you know, you won't leave it. You know what to do. But the, the fact that I was your boss, you thought you were getting my good side. I'm trying to help you. Amen. But if you you did pray the prayer, you tell me you didn't mean it. I feel bad for you. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. But if you pray that prayer in sincerity, that's good. That's all it takes. Her sister, Ina, I think prayed in sincerity. She was more effective. She didn't work there. She used to come visit. She, used to, she was fascinated when I talked about Jewish history. She was like, how do you know that? And then she, she was in court. Yeah, Margaret wasn't so much into that. But she listened. She went along. Do you remember Margaret? Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Uh, Russian girl. But it, they lived in Brooklyn. and they lived, But you know what? Right, Peach. They heard it. And she said, I don't believe it. No, that doesn't say it. It's uh... You know, Simon the Sorcerer in Acts chapter 8, he says he believed and got baptized. Mm -hmm. But he was lost and on his way to hell. Because he was wicked. Because he thought, he all he, all he, the reason he, he went along with this professing salvation was that he wanted the power the apostles had That's to right. work miracles so we could bewitch the people. Yeah. He was a sorcerer and he was already bewitching the people. He saw Philip and them working his miracles. Wow, give me that power. I want, that's the real stuff. And he thought it could be purchased with money. Uh -huh. He said, thou art in the bond of iniquity and the gall of deceit and bitterness. And so he, he rebuked him. And then, you know what he says to Peter? Pray these things don't happen to me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wrong answer, Simon. Yeah. You should have said, forgive me, Lord, save my soul. Amen. That's, that's, right. the, that's the yeah. thing. Yeah. Not, not pray these things won't happen to me. Well, go, go your way. It's going to happen. You know, we can't stop what the Bible predicts in Revelation. It's going to come to pass. And we are in a late, no doubt, we're in a late stage in, 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 in I believe, in world history. Uh, yeah. Could we be wrong? Yeah, could be wrong. I, mean, I thought that years ago, too, and it's possible. But it's also possible that we are, uh, if things are winding down. Whatever the case may be, it doesn't stop me from living my life for the Lord, 
Listen, praying, reading my Bible, coming to church, asking God to give me messages, sermons, yes. doing my Amen. teachings, doing yes. what I got to do, carrying my commission out to its fullest, because ultimately that's where I get my peace, doing what God yes. wants me to do. Yes. All right? Amen. Whatever the future is and when the Lord decides to come, that's up to God. Right. Yes. It's not up to me. We're just trying to point people away, and in the meantime, throw out the lifeline and try to reconcile some lost souls to God. Amen. That's our job. Be, look at the verse 20 again. In Christ's stead, he said, be reconciled to Christ. Right? Be reconciled to God. Mm -hmm. See that? That's a new conversation. And I'll close with a verse of Philippians. We're going to read. So our conversation, at some point, not all the time with everybody, but part of our conversation is, do you know you could be reconciled with God? Do you know you could be at peace with God? Is that what people really want? Yeah. yeah. Want you want to be at peace? Everybody wants peace. I mean, listen to me. If you could buy peace at the dollar store, you would buy it. Yeah. You could buy peace lily. But you can't buy peace. It's an attribute. You've got to receive it. It's a fruit of the Spirit. And you've got to get Christ. What's Christ in you? The peace that I have experienced over the years, I've said many times that I wouldn't trade that for anything. Yes. I really wouldn't. I mean, I, I mean, it doesn't mean that I'm always perfect and peaceful, but I have peace of peace of God. And for the most part, I'm walking in peace. Amen. Sometimes the devil tries to, you know, throw things my way to, to get me upset or try to rank, you know, rank with me. But for the most part, I, I keep my eyes on the Lord. Don't stay I, there. I, I, yeah, don't stay there. I don't stay there. I, I just stay stay in peace. I, I want to forfeit that peace. The, the, the best illustration where I could use is like my wife and I have an argument. And then there's tension between us. And the, who wants to live in that tension? I don't want to live in that tension. So then, you know, I say, I'm sorry. Then you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Even if I didn't do any work, I said, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. But then you want, you want happy peace. Wife, happy wife. That's right. You were in early. Otherwise, you fight, fight. It's like, oh, you know. Uh, tension and. Stress, stress kills people. Amen. Stress kills people, yeah, and, and, it, and it wears on you. And then all of a sudden, you have peace, peace, and you have comfort with each other. And you know who wants that tension? Amen. And by the way, a good thing to say is, "I'm sorry," to someone you love if you hurt. And even if maybe the other person was wrong too, they'll say, "You know, I'm sorry too." And you know, that's how you and you make things up and let it go, let it go on. That's right. Don't hold on to it. Amen. Amen. But be reconciled to God. So now let's look at one last thing about a conversation and we'll close it up. Turn to Philippians chapter 3. Keep going to the right. A couple of books to your right. Philippians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians. Three books to be exact. All right, Philippians 3, and we will look in verse, when you get there, verse 20. Amen. That's our conversation. And I'll give you a good illustration. Let's let's remember this thought as we read this. You're an ambassador. Have you thought of that recently? Come on, yeah. Have you thought of that? Some of you thought of that, right? That's a good thought. Okay. But you know that. We know that, but we don't always think of it. I know that. I don't always think of it. So I I forced to think of it tonight, but we're, we're an ambassador. Think if you were an ambassador. For the United States in a foreign land. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's a dignified position. You'd be treated <clears throat> royally. You'd have diplomatic immunity. You could park anywhere you are. <laughs> Sometimes in, we, in New York City, we drive around and yeah. depending on where we are, my wife's like, look, there's a spot there. And you know, we, we see it's like an embassy. Yeah. So no, it's, it's for diplomats only. Yeah. You cannot park there. Your call will be told too sweet. So, you know, don't, don't, don't matter. In New York City, you got to be really careful. You park. you got to look ten times. Read the sign again. I go, honey, read that sign again. Go out and read it. You read it. Read it again. Yeah. Just double, double check. You do not want to come back and have your car towed. No. You want to make sure. It's Tuesday, Friday. Today's Thursday. We're okay. All right. Wait, wait, wait. Sometimes the signs, they have other signs. Oh, yeah. Look, if you you got to say, man, they're going to trick me here. If you don't feel right about it, do not park. Just go somewhere else. Get out of there. But you're an ambassador. So think about that for a minute. If you're an ambassador, what's our conversation? You you will represent that foreign country, America, or in this case, heaven. We represent heaven. 
When somebody that needs to get in touch with God or needs God in their life because they're going through a hard time, you know who they're going to call? They're going to call an ambassador. They're going to call you. They're going to call me. They're going to say, hey, pray for me. Amen. That's right. Talk to me. Pastor Joe, help me. I'm going through a hard time. I need something. It's okay. Mm -hmm. why, would they, why would they call me? Why would they call you? Because they trust mm -hmm. that you'll talk to God. Amen. They'll trust that you might help connect them to God. Come on. Mm -hmm. Even if they're not believers. Guys in my office used to ask me. Pray for me. Help me. And then later on, when that's over, then they go back to do what they want to do. But <laughs> when they have a need, like Pharaoh, he'll cry out for help. And that's our job, to be ready to give an answer to all men with fear. But the hope that's within you. The hope that's within you, which is Christ. And you can, you relay that because you're reconciling them to God. I remember witnessed this girl years ago on the sub, on the uh, Long Island Railroad going to Manhattan. And it was a great conversation we had. And then at the end of it, I don't know, never saw her again. I don't know who she was. But it was that just happened in one of those conversations. It happened to me, I can't tell how many times. And it came up, we were talking. And she was like, well, what are you saying to me? There's no hope for me? Because I was like, explaining that sin and you're, she goes, then I'm done. I said, no, 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 no. No, no, no. That's that, you know, that's the idea. You if you feel that way, that's good because then you realize you can't get in. Yet the hope is Christ. I preached Christ, gave a track. I mean, maybe she got saved, I don't know. But she was like almost in tears. Like, what do you mean? Is the hope? I said, no, no, there, there is hope. The hope is Christ. Amen. It's not what you've done or didn't do, because you know, I, I don't know, but she, whatever I said, she got she was like crying. She's like, oh. I messed up. I said, well, yeah, but we all mess up, but that leads to the point where I need help. Yeah. And my commission that day, I never saw it again, was to help reconcile her to God. Right? Yeah. Look at Philippians 3.20. Philippians 3.20. For our conversation is in heaven. Everybody see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's our new conversation. You're a new creature, you got a new commission, and you got a new conversation. Mm -hmm. Our conversation is in heaven, for whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Our conversation will also be about other things. But at some point, your conversation is going to turn to God. Amen. You've given enough time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yes. You're going to, you're, you're, somebody will know. They can talk. You know, again, on the train years ago, going to Banana, I'd read my Bible. So this guy would see me. Asian guy. I didn't know who I was. And they'd see me reading the Bible all the time. And he was a Christian. So he, he said, wow, he, he, he looks you read every day. Yeah. Talking. And uh, he, had a, he had a Bible. He says, can I ask you a question? Yeah. And then he realized, kind of knew what I was talking about. So then he asked me some more questions. And he goes, listen, we need someone to preach in our church. Will you come and preach? I said, well, I have a, I have a pastor at church, but I'd be glad to go preach. He was in Bayshore. Yeah. And he gave me, and he was a nice fellow, you know. And he met me on the train by reading my Bible. Mm -hmm. And he was trusting that I was a good ambassador for Christ. Mm -hmm. And he could trust me that what I was going to say once he talked to me. Well, that's the same thing. We all have that ability to let others know that. Again, you pick and choose. You can't, you got to use wisdom. But part of our commission is to help others know they can be reconciled to God. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, listen, if you were in trouble with the law and somebody was willing to issue you a pardon for your transgression, you'd be all too happy to take that. Amen. Yeah, I mean, come on. If you did something wrong, you were going to you know, go to prison or something, and somebody offered you a pardon, like, thank you. What do I owe you for that? There's nothing. I just want you to be set free. Like, wow. That'd be like, wouldn't you, wouldn't, wouldn't you feel you're a debt to owe this guy? Sure. Mm -hmm. You'd be like, what do you want to do with anything you want? Mm -hmm. Well, that's the same thing that happened to us, except we don't see it that way, because we don't visualize it. We live in the here and the now, and we're affected by the heat, the temperature, what we see, we're here, and we're affected by this. But spiritually, we don't see, we're blinded a lot of times to what's really going on. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, God wants us to be reconciled to Christ, and that's what our commission is. And I think that's what we do as a church and what you do individually. And it's by live your life. It's not like you have to preach a message to somebody. You've just got to live your life and, and, and do right. You hear me? Mm -hmm. Amen. Just do right, because that helps. That helps when you tell somebody about Christ, and you... This, you always say, look, I'm not perfect, but if you're doing right, it gives you a little more courage to speak up for Christ. Yeah. If you're living in sin, even though you know it's true, it's going to be harder for you to tell somebody about God. Come on. Because yeah. right. oh, yeah. you know you're not doing right. Mm -hmm. And I remember that was our, our missionary, our dear friend who's in the Philippines now, who's doing a terrific job. But years ago when he was, he knew the truth and he was a good soul winner. Mm -hmm. He was not, he was 
God, he was really in trouble. He was messed up. But he would tell people, even in bad states, about Christ. Because he knew he, what he was going through. But he would tell them, look, I'm messed up, but this is what you need. And, it, you know, they were like, really? But, I mean, he was telling them. And as best he could. Now, today, you know, seven years. He's a missionary in the Philippines. Yeah, seven years. Seven years. Yeah. Started seventh year. And wow. He'll start seventh year in March. And he went, he went without deputation. In other words, he didn't go support from other churches. Well, he should have, but he didn't. And, you know, he kind of just went with our support and a few people that picked him up personally. He's Pretty not, amazing. He's not the average parent. Is he's it? not. <laughs> he's certainly not. He was so unique that I realized that I, I, I just said, Bruce, we're going to pray for you and, and we'll give you all the support we can. But he did it. He's there. It's a miracle. Yeah, he's a miracle. Yeah. He's a miracle to God and Scott. Yeah. Bruce, he helped build Uncle Billy's house. He helped frame out Uncle Billy's dad. He helped frame out that house when he put the extension years ago. But anyway, you know, his job over there, you know what he does? He reconciles people to God. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's what we're yeah. supporting him for. He's reconciling people to God a lot of times. I mean, hundreds. Okay. I can't tell many people he's, he's done that with over there. Amen. That's, that's his job, so to speak. So. All right. If you're in Christ, say amen. 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 If you're not in Christ, pray that sinner's prayer. Ask God to save you. It's a very simple prayer. Lord, I'm a sinner. You're the Savior. Wash me in your precious blood. Forgive me my sins. And let me be new. I want to be a new creature in Christ. I want to be saved. I want to be born again. You pray that prayer. And I honestly mean that. God will save your soul. And Christ will come into your life. Once you get that assurance, and you're given a commission to help reconcile the world to Christ, to God through Christ, just the way he reconciled you. And your conversation is very simple. It's be you reconcile and tell them as best you can and through the way you live and some of the words. Give a track and help them. So that's part of our job down here. I pray that this was a blessing to you. So be with us tonight, Lord. Dismiss us with your peace. Help us all, Christians, and those struggling, that they would just cry out, Lord, help me. Give me strength to go forward, to walk with you. I want the peace that passes all understanding. I want to understand more about your way, your will, your word. Give me the insight that I can only get by obedience to the Holy Spirit talking to me. And I pray that you'd help us all when the Holy Spirit nudges us to do or not to do. We'd obey. Help us to obey, Lord, that still small voice in our heart. Help us to hear your voice and look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Have your way for our, in our lives and dismiss us with your blessing. Thank you for the good report on Rosie. And thank you that Mary Ann came through the surgery successfully. And I pray that she doesn't need any more treatments. And I pray for Tom Mastelon too, that you'd help him. He got a stent put in, and apparently everything else is going okay. okay so watch over family. him. Josephine's family, Sa oh, Sammy and his family, uh, have mercy. It's a sudden death. And I pray, God, that you would just be present and help them, Lord, during this tragic time. So thank you again for all you do for us. Cover us in your precious blood. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.